All right, guys, the Hangar 9 MB339 is going to be wrapped up in this video. This is a wonderful beginner aircraft, and we've got a lot of fun details to do in this video, and we are also gonna be running the engine in this video. So watch it all the way through, enjoy the journey. Let's dive back in to this aircraft. All right, last video we finished off with this. We got our Sky Candy landing light set up for the MB339. So let's open up this box and take a look at what's inside. If you're getting one of these aircraft, I highly suggest getting the light installation kit from Sky Candy landing lights. There's a link in the video description down below. This is a wicked kit for this aircraft. Let's take a look. Okay, the reason the box is so big is because Sal from Sky Candy sent me the tip tanks that uh, he's already done the installation on. Tip tanks with Sky Candy landing lights. So let's take a look at these guys. So very, very cool kit. So this is the tip tanks with the lighting set up. So you can see there how it's uh, oriented. So you've got your light, your, I think that's a one inch light, it looks like, lenses on there. We've got our lenses installed. Uh, really, really cool kit. Marker lights on the, the outside there. And the other tank is the same. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the kit itself. Perfect, so this is what, um, so everything in here is not what, if you order the kit from the website, so I'll preface this, if you order the kit from the website, what is in here is not what's gonna come with the kit. Remember, this kit that we get made is a custom kit. Uh, Sal from Sky Candy knows exactly how we do our planes and it's designed to be installed with our methods. So if you order the kit by itself, it's gonna be the lights and maybe the digital switch. Okay, so we've got our lenses here. Now the lenses are pretty cool because you've got your lenses and then you've got your cut template. So the cut template, this is designed with a little mark right there. So the cut template fits over top of the end of the tip tank and that tells you exactly where to cut it. Um, the lens uh, or the lighting holders right there, these are the pieces that fit inside the tip tanks and very slick setup. So we've got our lights uh, with our nav lights. So there's our green and red lights, our digital, uh, our, our actual sky candy lights. Now the custom parts of our kit basically is we've got an SP06 optical switch. So this is the same type of switch that we use to power the landing gear in our last video. So again, generic, works with any radio system, but this is already set up and ready to go. So we've got our power input, uh, this is going to be our signal that goes to the receiver. This is what powers our lighting setup. And the lighting setup that uh, Sky Candy does for us, so this is all custom again as well too. So we've got two Castle Creation BECs. These go in the tip tanks and this runs everything. So very cool setup. I would suggest if you want the premier setup, go with this guy. We're gonna be throwing these in the aircraft in this last video, so very, very slick. Thank you again, Sky Candy, for getting us these lights, and I look forward to seeing them on on this aircraft. All right, so we're gonna work on our wing tips here shortly, but I just wanna finalize the position of everything and get all of our stuff finalized and run as far as power goes. So next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the power lead done for the turbine, which is also going to power the lighting setup. So all we need is a lead coming to the turbine, of course, with our standard uh, end for turbines. And we're also gonna have a JR connection or a, a standard servo connector coming off to power the lighting system. All right, so here's our wiring harness for the turbine slash lighting system. So you can see there, very simple. Uh, other nice thing about these connectors is just the way they're designed or the connector holders, um, obviously all the stuff is covered up. You don't need to heat shrink anything because they're all separated and covered, so no chance of shorting those guys out. So now we'll get this installed in the aircraft. Okay, so we've got all of our wiring run now for everything, so uh, it's time to glue in our battery tray. We've got the connectors glued in there. So I've put our, uh, our batteries on the tray and ran some Velcro, so that's all done. So what we'll do now is we are going to mix up some Hysol and 
glue this in place. Now, because there's so many holes in the bottom of this tray here, we really can't screw that down because our, our screw holes don't line up with anything. So we're just gonna glue that down and it's gonna be a very strong solution. All right, so we've got our DSM-10 mounted on the side of the fuselage. Coming off the DSM-10, we've got the uh, Rex-3, which is used as our on-off switch. So that's been paired to the program in the Jetty radio, so that's done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start fastening our stuff to the board. So because we've got everything run through the board, I'm gonna actually bolt the board down now, and then we'll start screwing all of our different items down to our main board. All right, and it's time for another episode of Tip Time, and this Tip Time is brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. And at the time of filming this video, there was still about 30 trusties left on the website. I don't know if there's any left, but if you are interested in a trusty bent screwdriver, we made a short, uh, small production run of trusty bent screwdrivers made to this exact specification, same bend and everything. They are serial numbered, and you can check them out on the website listed down below. Limited quantities. When they're gone, they're gone. Okay, so this tip revolves around fuel pumps. So I'm getting ready to install the fuel pump and we've got a four mil and four mil nipple on these guys. So our intake is gonna be a six mil line going to the UAT. So what I wanna do in this case is I wanna take my, uh, my six mil line obviously doesn't fit over top. So simple solution, we take a little section of four millimeter, making sure we're on the intake side of the pump and we are going to install four millimeter over top of the nipple. And then we will clip that off. Now what we can then do is we can put our six mil over top and we'll safety wire that. And that is how you attach six mil to a four mil nipple. All right, we have our lights and everything set up. We just finished recording our podcast on the RC Air Experience channel. That's our other channel, it's the podcast channel. And we had our podcast with Greg and Jenny Alderman. Greg is from uh, HeliDirect, Jag RC, Electron USA, Boomerang Jets. So check it out. There's some links down below to the RC Air Experience. That's our other podcast channel. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so we've got our equipment installed in our planned out layout. Nothing's been plugged in yet except our power to our receiver. So that is done and looking very nice. Now we need to set up some stuff in the radio. So when you're setting up the Jetty and Cortex in the manner that we're doing, there's basically gonna be a cable, an EX uh, bus cable going from port E1 to the Cortex. We're gonna have a secondary power lead coming to the Cortex, and we've got six or seven channels available on the Cortex. So those channels, one through six, need to correspond with the controls in the radio system. Channel one is throttle, aileron, flap, flap, aileron, elevator. That's okay, but all of our other channels that are rudder seven, elevator, nose wheel steering, those all need to be in the first channel. So I'm gonna do some mucking around here and mix our channels up and put our primary controls in the first channels. So the only downside to doing what I just did, rearranging all the channels, is your uh, positive limit, sub trim, and all that stuff doesn't transfer over. So when I look at these channels here, 80 and 90, 64, 125, those are all things carried over from the previous channel. So what I need to do is zero all these out and then we'll have to go back in and program these things. Solution to that is from square one, when you start off, make sure your channels are assigned properly. I don't often, I do more builds where you're putting your cortex into a central box. So in this case, um, the first six channels have to be assigned to your flight controls. So. Uh, it, it's a bit of a whoops on me. It'll take a little bit of reprogramming to get it sorted out. Um, one other thing that we did here is I made a function for our SP06 for the gear. So what that is tied to is our on-off switch, which is here. So 
that SP06 for the gear will switch on when our power is in the on position. So uh, that's going to make sure that that gear gets powered when it needs to be powered. Our lights will be on a separate switch, our SC switch, so those will also operate the SP06, our digital switch, but uh, they'll be on the light switch. Okay, so I've zero, zeroed out all of our servo channels. I'm just gonna turn the radio back on here. And I just uh, plugged in a battery. And I wanna confirm that the on off switch and everything works. So turn model on, receivers bound. Nothing's plugged in on the airplane, but that is perfect. So we're pretty much installed here on all the equipment in the front. We've got most of our plugs installed. There's a few little things to tie up there, but um, Earlier, I uh, mounted our on-off valve to one of our Cortex gyro boards. Now, initially I was gonna put that on the side wall here. The problem with that is the tube has a, a too hard of a bend on it. So what I did was I shoe gooped this plate onto our tank. Now, not a whole lot will stick to this poly tank, but shoe goop sticks very well. So now what we can do is we can run our uh, line feeding our turbine into our valve and then this is going to loop around and go into our valve So there's our turbine on off valve right there We've installed the filter right after the fuel pump. So that's right there uh, Orientation of the filter Absolutely does not matter if you write a comment below and say the filter needs to be vertical because then the air is going to purge out Okay, so when you're going vertical straight up in an upline and you have your filter positioned vertical when the plane is flat, now in the upline your filter is flat. Doesn't matter what position your filter is in. You may disagree with me and that's okay. You can disagree with me. And you can even write down below that you disagree with me. Doesn't matter what position your filter's in. If you're running a filter, awesome. Run it in any orientation you want. Um, when I run a turbine aircraft, I always do a full throttle on the ground. Even a plane that's had 100 flights on it, uh, you start the aircraft up, go to full throttle for two seconds, back down, that clears any air bubbles that may have gotten caught in your filter. Totally works. So we've got that set, off, set up. Um, we can finish plugging in the rest of our items here. Um, yeah, getting pretty close on the organization. I think it's time to start thinking about moving on to our lighting installation. Now, we're kind of working from this point out towards the wingtips. So we've got everything basically organized here. Uh, this is our power that's gonna be feeding our light system. So that power that's feeding the light system is going to go to this guy right here. Now this comes from our SP06 switch and this will power the entire light system. So we're gonna get that stuff connected and then kind of tuck it underneath the board and we'll get the rest of our wiring organized here nice and simple. So one of the other things I'll cover, and I've, I believe I've covered this earlier in one of the previous videos, but when you're using a Cortex with a Jetty receiver like this, um, you have so many extra channels. So this thing has 12 channels. Plus you can get another seven from your Cortex. So you can conceivably have 19 available channels from this layout. Um, each one of these pro, uh, channels on the, uh, or ports on the Rex 12 is completely programmable. So this port number one here, we could make channel 24. Uh, we can do whatever we want. One other thing we're gonna add here is we're gonna add another power lead coming from one of the servo outputs on the Rex 12, and that's gonna feed port A, just with a positive negative wire, and that's gonna give our Cortex another power supply, because right now it's getting all of its power just through this lead right there, because we've got all of our servos running through the Cortex. So once we do that, you'll have a better power solution there, and our flaps, which are still needing to be plugged in, those can get programmed and plugged in to the Rex 12, 
So let's get all this stuff finalized for wiring. Okay, so a couple important things here. Uh, we're just programming the channels of the, uh, or the output pins of the Rex 12. So we have run our lines between the gear and brake controller to the Rex 12. Now, one thing I'll do here is to, in order to prevent any back feeding, I cut the positive and negative lines between the gear controller and the Rex 12. So now it's only the signal line that's going into the gear controller. And when we turn this off, I'll show you guys, you can see the red light of the gear controller, shutting the model down. SP06 turns off, which stops the power to the gear controller. Now we'll turn it back on. And powers back on the gear controller right there. Cortex is doing its thing. So the other thing we've got set up here is we've got aileron, aileron, elevator, elevator, rudder running through the Cortex, but we also have a nose wheel as well. So the nose wheel gyro is controlled by the Cortex. That's the way we prefer to do it. And uh, that's in the radio we've got set up here. Uh, when that comes up, it turns the steering off. So right now, if we retract our landing gear, if we retract the landing gear, you can see I'm steering and the steering's turned off. And if we go down, Steering is back on. All right, so all of our wiring is done here. We are all cleaned up, zip tied together. We uh, aren't going to shoe goop everything yet. I'd like to uh, wait till I run through everything and make sure it's all good. We've mounted our antennas for the jetty. So one goes uh, side to side, one's pointed forward and backwards in the front section. So that's done. Next thing I'm going to do is fill up our UAT. I like to do that so it can sit and the filter that's in there can soak and hopefully get rid of some of the bubbles. When, when we CG this aircraft, we're not going to do it with any fuel in the tank. Reason for that is our CG point is in this range right behind the wing tube, and that is dead center of the tank. So it makes no difference having a little bit of fuel or a landing amount of fuel in the tank. Generally, my way of doing things is you always want to CG the aircraft with a landing amount of fuel or landing condition. So if you're gonna land on a Carf Rebel as an example, you know, our CG point is back here somewhere, our fuel tanks in front of the CG point. So you wanna be CGing this aircraft with a landing amount of fuel. So, you know, a couple inches in the bottom of the tank as an example. But in this case, makes no difference. So let's put some fuel in the system, fill up the UAT and let that soak. All right guys, so it is tip tank lighting time. So we've got all of our parts laid out here and uh, we're ready to get started on this stuff. So a couple things to be aware of. The tip tanks are plastic. So you've got uh, basically plastic tip tanks. There's a wood uh, piece here. There's some, um, maybe some fiberglass rods that support the tanks this way when you tighten the, uh, the fastening pieces down. But the reason I bring that up is um, Sky Candy just sent me this setup because this is what they're using for their pictures. And there's a little bit of an indent right here. And I was trying to figure out what the heck is that indent for? It's on both of them. Um, it's because they're, they used a little bit of shoe goop to hold the Castle Creations BEC into the tip tank. So, um, so you just wanna be aware of what glues and stuff you're using on these tip tanks because uh, it may melt the plastic. So this is our setup that we use and it's not, again, I think I mentioned this already, it's not going to be what you'll get if you just order the basic lighting set. So, but I'll show you exactly how we set this all up. So we've got our jetty optical switch. This is already mounted in the plane, right? This has the power going back to where the tip tanks fasten to the wings. So this portion is all done. Again, this is a custom piece, but very affordable little uh, electronic switch that works awesome. You've got your Sky Candy lights. So th these are the one inch versions. And you can see here, one of them is trimmed down a little bit, the shrink tube. The other one is full normal shrink tube. So when you install these lights in this setup, you wanna be trimming that shrink tube back a little bit because the light goes inside this housing right here and it won't fit 
um, if you've got the shrink tube on there. So that's something to be aware of. So these lights are 4.8 volts to 6 volts max. You don't run these any higher than that. 4.8 is perfect. And that's why we use the Castle Creations BECs in our setup. So the way this works is our power comes into this plug right here. We've got a Y cable. The one side goes to the nav lights, which is totally fine up to uh, a three cell LiPo, which is what we're using. And then the other one comes to our Castle Creations BEC, which feeds our tip light. So basically we've got 11.1 volts coming in here and that splits and gets dropped down for our bright sky candy lights and our nav lights. Now I wanna keep this whole installation very brief um, I think this lighting set is going to be extremely popular for this plane. It is a wonderful addition. So we've got our light lenses here, we've got our cutting template, and our housings that hold our lights. So step number one, we want to start off with our cutting template. So we will take scissors and we will cut along the line that's already molded on this piece. And this is going to be our cut template. Okay, so we've got our cut template cut out. So if you look here, this is exactly what we are looking for. So now we'll take our fine line Sharpie and we'll draw our Sharpie mark on the tip tank and that gets us our perfect positioning. Uh, lens wise, you can see there we've got our lenses. Now the lenses are way too long, right? So the lenses you can basically uh, overlap as much as you want. If you look at the sample that they sent. Um, you've got the cut, which is right about here, somewhere in that range. You've got the lens, which comes a little bit farther and perfect. And then our inner housings here, you can see now why we need to cut that shrink tube off. So just trim the little bit on there so it fits through the hole that's, uh, that's cut in place. But this is all designed so it fits perfectly in there and it's just a nice clean layout. All right, so Sky Candy has really made this light set uber simple. So if you look here, there's a bit of a angle ridge there. So we're just going to cut that off and that's going to match the, uh, the one that they sent pre-cut already. So that is super simple. And then when you go to install these guys, basically they, you leave the ridge on there and they just slip in place and that's it. You're going to glue them in place. Once the glue sets, you can just cut off that ridge and your housing for your light setup is uh, already in place. That is so nice and clean. All right, I'm also testing two different adhesives here. So we've got the tip that we cut off and we uh, took a little bit of the lens material and I'm just trying two different types of glue. So number one, we've got uh, Weld On 16 is kind of the, the industry name, but this is methyl acrylate, uh, the thick methyl acrylate, which is used for gluing acrylics together. Um, it cures pretty quick as well. So, so far I don't see any negative reactions with the plastic and uh, it doesn't look like it's affecting it at all. And the other one is we got old fashioned trusty cement for plastic models. So this stuff looks like it's fine as well, uh, but it is taking a lot longer to cure. So if you use this stuff, it uh, looks like it'll be fine, but it might be a couple hours. This stuff, uh, it's been on there for 10 minutes and it's already quite firm. So I think either one of those will work for our situation. Couple things here with some progress. So. I used my Align tool, my Align reamer tool, made a 10 millimeter hole in the side and mounted our marker light. Now, there's a piece of wood, uh, I'll try and show you guys, in the side of the tip tanks, right there. So that's where I did the hole for the marker light. Um, the lens painted black and just used shoe goop to install the light inside the lens and then our clear lens over top of the tip tank. Now, this looks a little bit grungy right now, but the thing you have to remember is, so once this is done, we tape off right here and a little bit past the, uh, the tip of the actual blue and that gets painted silver and hides all the, the yuckiness. So. That is how our tip tanks are getting finished. So just have the tank sitting vertical like that. So we're waiting for the shoe goop or the E6000 to cure. 
Okay, so our lenses are all glued in place now solidly. So we're gonna take our tape off. We're going to take our, uh, with the, um, the shoe goop, all you have to do is rub the excess off and it'll come right off. And then we'll get this prepped off and we're gonna get those painted. All right, so we've got our tips all painted with chrome paint. It looks really good. So we've hooked up our nav light to the other end of the Y lead and put a keeper on there. So now this can all get tucked in and this is our connection point to our wing. Okay guys, so getting ready to attach the tip tanks here. So what I did was I laid the air, the wings out, uh, just went over them with my heat gun and it just helps tighten up all the covering, uh, you know, on these flaps and aileron surfaces, they kind of get a little bit wavy in this area. So you can see now on the reflection, they're nice and tight. That's a pretty common thing with a covered airplane if you're not familiar. We've done that on this wing and now we're ready to install our tip tank. We just got to do our connector on this one end. All right, so we've uh, screwed on the tip tanks to the wing. Now I did have to run a tap through one of these guys and the threads, just in case you're wondering, is an M4 times 07. Uh, so I did have to run a tap through the front, uh, front threads there just to clean it up. Uh, use Loctite, of course. Uh, use Loctite, of course, on those guys and they look nice and solid, look good. Okay, so we've got the 339 on the stand here, and we're just putting the wings on for the first time. Uh, very easy process because of our single ash lock connector. So just uh, getting familiar with this, we've put the, the left wing on. When I initially unboxed this, I was wondering what this hatch was for. I thought it was maybe just for tank access. That, what it's for is doing up your wing bolts. So with this hatch off, you've got two wing bolts right in the center here. So it should be fairly easy to access. And that of course is where our extra uh, wire connector is, uh, or where our wire connector is gonna sit. Um, so anyways, we'll do up the two wing bolts on that side. Right, so our wings are fit. They are uh, fairly simple to put on. Uh, the thumb screws holding them on have a nice big head, so no, no tools required, just your fingers. Now we're putting the intakes on. The intakes are fiberglass, so they're all uh, decent fiberglass construction. Pretty straightforward, the manual explains this very well. So when you install the intake, you should have a quarter inch or six millimeters between the fuselage and the intake at this back section. And that kind of puts it in the right spot. So we're gonna push that intake in. Uh, we'll take our pin vise and we'll do our holes and we'll get our intakes mounted on both wings. All right guys, so we've got our intakes installed, screwed in on both sides, so top and bottom. Quite simple to install. Other thing I've done is gone over the underside of the aircraft, tightened up all the covering on the underside. And now we are ready to flip this guy over and get our surfaces set up. Um, if you remember, because we changed our servo outputs, we need to go back and do all of our servo setup again. So let's get that done. All right, so we've got our rates set up here, our travels. Now I don't like to have high and low rates. So what I've done is I've gone through here and just kind of put some averages in place, uh, what I think is gonna be correct. And uh, I'll show you in the radio what we're doing. We're also adding 20-ish uh, percent expo in normal flight mode. So what we do with jet ease, we go into fine tuning and we're gonna go into dual rates. Now we've got six different flight modes and that is tied to SD, which is our flap switch. So now this comes down to lingo. So we've got a flight mode switch that operates our flaps, that operates all of our rates and everything. So it's not necessarily a flap switch, it's a flight mode switch. So we've got six different flight modes and the reason for six is we've got gyro on and off flight modes. So if you look at our screen there, you'll see the expo change. Uh, when the gyro is off, the expo goes up. When the gyro is on, the expo goes down. Uh, our rates stay the same. And uh, we've got that rate the same on each of the flight modes. So we've got landing flaps, takeoff flaps, and regular flight mode. So those are all adjustable, of course. So maybe on landing flaps, you want more aileron. So we can come in here and adjust that and add more aileron. The key though is because we've got six different flight modes, if we are in full flaps, gyro on, and we switch this to 85%, if we turn gyro off, that's another flight mode. So we need to change that to 85%. But then on 
Uh, regular takeoff flaps, we're back down to 60 or 75 percent. Regular flight mode, 75 percent. So a little, uh, little thing to remember there for the owner and you guys, if you set your planes up this way, is if you make any changes, you gotta change all of your flight modes. So there we go, we're back to where we were. So we've got all that done on the plane, our travels are set up, our flaps are set up. Okay, looking at the manual here, we've got a little bit of mixing required with our flaps. So takeoff flaps, we need two millimeters of down elevator. Full flaps, we need five millimeters of down elevator. So we can go in and program this in, in flight mode trims. So there we go. So flight mode trims, we're in full flaps right now. Let's turn the model on. Gyro is initialized. So I just want to add a little bit of down elevator and then we'll go into our regular flaps and add 10%. So now I've confirmed that that stays on with the gyro. And then if you look there, watch the elevators. So we'll go flaps off. They come up a little bit, full flaps, elevator compensation. So that is adjustable in the flight mode trim menu, but also because of the way we've got this model set up, if we add a whole bunch of elevator trim in full flap mode. So right now we've got 30 points. That doesn't carry over to takeoff flaps. So we can manually trim it out while we're flying for each flight mode. And you can either add that back to the flight mode trim or just use your trim button as well. That's totally fine. But if the manual suggests in full flaps that you have some elevator compensation, I like to program at least a starting point in. And then on the maiden flight, that's one of those things that you can be adjusting and getting it tuned in during that flight. Okay, so now with all of our control throws programmed in there, we want to program the gyro, the cortex. So there's a couple considerations here. The normal cortex programming um, or the layout has the cortex um, outputs facing forward. We've changed this around so it, it knows that it's facing that direction. So what we want to do is we want to take a bind plug and we want to turn the plane off. Right now it's on. We want to install the bind plug in the programming port, turn the plane back on. So we'll turn the plane off. Take our bind plug, programming plug, whatever you want to call it, and install that in the Cortex. And now when we turn the aircraft back on, you'll see the series of LED light ups. So it's going to go white and then we'll get a double bump of green. There we go. And the surfaces move. So we go right aileron, left aileron, forward elevator, back elevator, right rudder, left rudder, and gyro on or off. And that starts going crazy, so now we'll turn the plane off, pull out our bind plug, and we can turn the plane back on. So now it's gonna do its normal startup, and we're good to go. So we're in amber mode, and if we turn our gyro off, we're in red mode. Now that buzzing you hear is the rudder. Because we use the carbon horn, this hole is very tight. I put a little bit of lubricant on there, but um, the servo is just trying to center. So now what we can do is we can go into full flap mode because that gives us our highest gyro gain. Gyro's on and we can confirm that it's moving the correct direction. So when we lift our aileron, the surface should go up. When we lift the other aileron, surface should go up, which it does. When we're back here and we lift the elevator, elevators should go up, which they do. When you're standing behind the plane and you move the rudder, 
the rudder is moving the correct direction. So the rudder moves with the direction that you're moving the tail. And we've also got nose to check. So it should be compensating, which it is counteracting the direction that we uh, are moving the nose. So programming on this aircraft is done. Let's take a look at the CG. And for that, we're gonna pull down our RC CG machine, which is super cool. And uh, till the, I think the end of December, right now the RC CG, CG machine is $100 off. Um, it's awesome. Uh, I love this tool so much. It's a huge time saver. And we're gonna use it to set up the Hangar 9 339. All right, so super simple setup here. We've got our stand, our RC CG machine. So we've got the uh, RC CG machine set up. There's a bubble level right in the cross there. That's nice and level and everything. So, and first thing we do, and I haven't pre-done any of this stuff, but we set up a new model in the Zykoi uh, unit. We've got the aircraft sitting on the stand. And then what we do is we look at the number here on the front. So basically the front edge of this edge of our actual red block is 747. So now our distance fronts to main, 747, enter. Distance means to CG. So we come around the other side and we've got our leading edge tool here. So this, we just slide it over and we are going to run this to the leading edge of the wings. There we go is that gives us our leading edge mark. And then what we wanna do is we measure back the predetermined from the manufacturer distance behind the leading edge. So in the case of this plane, they give us quite a range. So from the leading edge, it's five to six inches back. We're gonna kinda of go towards the rear of that mark. So in the manual it shows 127 inches to 152. So this plane has very wide range because of the design. So what we're gonna go with is we're gonna go with 145, which would be about five and three quarters inches. So 145 millimeters back from the leading edge. So the unit comes with a whole bunch of different rulers. This one works for us because it goes from one, uh, one to, or zero to 150. So I'm gonna try and show you guys this as best as possible and stay out of the way. So from our leading edge right there, we want to go back 145 was what we said. So hopefully my head wasn't in the way. So I've measured from the leading edge uh, marker here back to 145. So what this is going to do is the predetermined ruler marks on here is going to give us our mains to CG number that we need to put in our balancer. So I sneak my head underneath there and we are at 72. So now our distance means to CG, 72. And our distance from means to weight placement, that doesn't have to be super accurate, but so just looking here, the front, we're about 900 to the nose. So we'll just keep it at 900. All right, so that's all done. We'll hit save and then we'll select this one. And there we go. So we've got that plugged in and all set up. So we're tail heavy right now, which is to be expected because we have no cockpit in place. So let's put our cockpit in place, our hatches, and see where we come in at. Now I didn't put the ventral fins on because this aircraft's gonna be shipped to the owner. So we're just gonna leave the ventral fins off. They just screw in place. So we're not gonna worry about those because they weigh almost nothing. Okay, so I've added a little bit of weight, a couple pieces of lead in the nose, and there we are. We're bang on at 72, uh, add zero pounds. So let's check the full weight of this aircraft. So weight. So no fuel, we're at 23 pounds um, dry. So UAT is full. And there is the 
layout and the numbers that we used. All right, so with our CG done, we're gonna flip this plane around. We're gonna check and see fuel tank capacity and we are gonna do a test run. All right, so just filled up the fuel tank and it is essentially exactly two liters in the fuel tank, which is nice to know. So we're gonna do our test run on this aircraft. All right, so just getting ready to test run this, but this is the first time we've turned the lights on. So here is the Sky Candy lights. Man, that looks good. It's, uh, the camera never does it justice, but uh, that is so stinking cool. Love it. Such a nice setup for this aircraft. The other important thing is the voltage. So if you look at our turbine voltage right there, basically when I turn the lights off, lights are off, lights are on, lights are off, lights are on, zero voltage change. Like, battery doesn't even know they're on, so. All right, let's fire this thing up and get it, uh, get it running. So like normal, as we go through the test run process, what I'll do is I'll put on the bottom of the screen exactly what we're doing. Pretty straightforward test, just like we do on all of our turbines. So we uh, start the turbine up, let the idle stabilize. Uh, we slowly increase the throttle stick to max, let the max idle stabilize, and then we will do our speed setup and tests. Once that's done, we'll do a, uh, a restart test and recheck our throttle, and that's basically the turbine setup. I'm gonna make my changes right now to the, the ECU settings, and then we'll get this thing running. All right, so setup changes have been made. Let's start this turbine. Ready? Now there's a little bit of air left in the line, so we may have to go through one more startup again. Oh, she'll get there.
and great running little Swiwin 80 engine. Thumbs up, runs beautifully, tons of power. It's gonna be a great fit for this aircraft. Right, test run done, we are going to drain our fuel out of the fuel system and we'll get this plane up on the stand to do our final closing details. First addition I did here was a GSU extension. So this just goes down to our GSU plug on our ECU. That allows us to be able to plug in the GSU up here instead of uh, doing it down there and having to fumble around in the bottom of the belly. So that's number one. Number two, we're gonna go through and we are going to goop all of our connections. All right, so we've done some final checkovers and tightened up all of our covering everywhere we could. And I think this aircraft is complete. Very, very nice. So one of our last steps here, we're not gonna show it on camera, but we've got our Revic wing bags for this aircraft, which are going to be stellar. So um, this is gonna be a great way to protect this aircraft. We've got the wing bags, horizontal stab bags. So for shipping, that is going to be awesome. And very last step here, we installed our build plate built by the lighter side of RC and done. All right, so final thoughts on this aircraft. Um, overall, very good beginner turbine aircraft. If you haven't built a turbine aircraft before, the combination of the manual, if you just follow the manual, you're gonna be doing pretty good. Uh, if you follow the build videos that we put together for this aircraft, uh, you'll be doing very well. And of course, depending on the aircraft, selection of parts and accessories, so the turbine and the control system, your installation may vary a little bit, but ultimately it's, it should be very similar to what we did on this aircraft. So you'll have success pretty easily with, uh, with this kit. Overall, good quality kit. It is wood, of course, it is balsa, uh, it is covered, but for a beginner turbine aircraft, uh, absolutely stellar. I, I would rather see people get something like this than a foam aircraft. The foam aircraft are cool. This has a little bit better fit and finish to it. And I think it's gonna be a longer lasting aircraft as well. Um, really no complaints overall with, uh, with the overall aircraft. Um, obviously we made a couple little changes here and there as we went through the entire project, but really, uh, really well put together from Hangar 9 and uh, Horizon Hobby. They did a great job on this aircraft. So the owner, Kyle, congratulations, Kyle. Uh, I know you and your son are gonna enjoy this aircraft a ton. It should be an absolute blast to fly. For anybody thinking about getting somebody else to build an aircraft for them, the way I do this is I'm gonna send the owner the jetty file and he can put that jetty file right on his radio and basically it's, it's essentially ready to go. Uh, the aircraft's been CG'd, we've checked it twice, once with our CG machine, and once I just use my fingers uh, five and three quarter inches back from the leading edge. Um, basically fuel it, fly it, ready to go. Obviously you wanna do a range check before you fly something like this for the first time, but uh, really exciting. So super simple, easy to put together, great aircraft. I'm uh, giving it the thumbs up for sure. So thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments about this aircraft or anything else, feel free to comment down below. You can also reach out to me by email, the lighter side of RC at gmail.com. Couple other closing things. Don't forget to check out the lighter side of RC after dark. We do live streams here from the shop. It's under that channel name though. So a uh, different channel and uh, we do it every couple weeks. Other thing is our podcast series has really kicked off the podcast channel is the RC Air Experience. Again, separate channel. And uh, me and my friend Anthony are doing the podcast there. We've got some great podcasts already recorded and released and some great upcoming ones. So if you're a podcast fan, check out that channel as well too. Thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.